Good morning. This is Robert with Pioneer Smokehouses, and today we're going to do smoked rainbow trout in the Big Chief smoker. Now, normally I have a brine mixture that I use for most of my fish, which includes salmon mostly, but today we're going to give a try to the trout salmon brine mix from Smokehouse Products. So this is all going to be done with their same products and stuff. Now, I have used their brines before, but I have not used their trout brine recently. So I wanted to give this one a shot and see how it uh, turned out. I'm not going to add any fancy treatments to it or anything like that. But normally, I would consider adding things like pepper, garlic, and brown sugar, and even honey, especially if it was salmon and I was going for more of a candied taste. Now, I went ahead and plugged in the Big Chief smoker to let it get preheating. Then I took out the trout. We're going to go ahead and look at some pictures from yesterday here. And you'll see that I took the trout out and I finished cleaned them and placed them in the brine mix. To prepare the brine mix, what I did was I dissolved half of the package in half a cup of water. I basically cut the recipe in half because I only needed that much liquid. Then I added that after it cooled a little bit to 32 ounces of cold water. When I did that, I did it in a couple of stages so that way I could rinse the bowl out completely. Now, I like to put my stuff in a Ziploc bag, but if you're not using a Ziploc bag, you should probably use glass dishes because it would keep it from reacting with the sodium in the brine. Now, different metals will react differently, and this is just the way that I prevent worrying about that. But my rule of thumb is glass, or plastic bag, and if I use a plastic bag, I also consider vacuum sealing. So that's another option. Once you get it in the refrigerator, every couple of hours or so, you should turn it. I probably only turned it three times, but I turned it in the first two hours, went to bed, got up in the morning first thing, turned it again, and then after I had my coffee and got settled in, then I went ahead and pulled it out and you can see here that I patted it dry on a paper towel and then spread it out with little gaps between each fish. Now, if you have larger fish, I do recommend that you fillet it. We ate the largest fish for dinner last night and I filleted that out and just baked it off with a little bit of Cajun seasoning and some lemon juice and that turned out great. But with this one, we just want it to be dry so that way it tacks up really good. After you dry it, the directions recommend that you let it sit up and make sure that it's all tacky and it says to have a glazed look to it. <clears throat> I like to be careful not to over dry any meat. Um, trout is pretty forgiving, but if you look at something like poultry or something like that, you can be growing bacteria really fast. So you definitely want to make sure that you don't over dry it. And I'm not a big fan of the whole uh, theory behind the Pelicine layer. I have tried it a bunch of different times, both ways, and I am having a hard time with the actual uh, logic behind that working pr properly. So I try to get it dried and get it into the smoker as soon as possible. Once it's dry and tacky, if you want to apply any extra seasonings, you can. Something I did consider was sprinkling a little bit of this on top, but I didn't want to add any extra sodium taste to it. So I probably would make my own seasoning and just kind of go with what's already in here and just mix it without salt and then lightly sprinkle a little bit on the top of each fish and maybe even the bottom. Here's our tray of fish. And I want to note something. I was having a lot of issues with the grill mats not staying on the trays and sliding around as I was using them. So the other day I tested out a twist tie and it worked great. So I'm showing you this here and I'll pop a picture right here of just the twist tie. I just wrap it right in the middle, right across the center bar. And if you wrap it around more, it'll hold firmly. But I think that's going to be enough for me. I've got one on each side and that'll keep it lined up. So when I load it, it'll be really easy. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and load the chips. Now this has been heating for a few minutes and I can feel that it's warm. So that means the burner is probably at full strength. Because it's rainbow trout, I'm going to use a milder wood. I, of course, prefer to either go with hickory 
or I prefer to go to the opposite end with an apple, but I want a regular wood taste. It's not gonna be too strong. So with rainbow trout, today I'm gonna use alder. This uh, wood blend is also a good choice, but it's a little stronger than the alder. So this is a fresh bag, and I just use a pair of scissors to cut a little triangle right out of the corner of the bag to make it easy to pour and direct. When I load the pan, I load it in what I call a little mountain, and then I just take it and tap down the center a little bit, and I make sure that it's not touching the edges. Remember, don't touch the edges of the pan if it's hot, because you will get burned. Just pat it down enough to go through the door, And if you fill it all the way up around the edges, it just won't burn, so you'll be wasting wood chips. So that's why I use the mountain process. As it burns down, it burns through the middle, and that will ash out, and around the edges will still end up charred, but they won't really completely burn. So that's why I do that. It's always easier to keep your smoker down on the ground when you're using a top load because you have to slide this tray in and out. But if you do that, don't do it on a deck or other burnable surface. You wanna put down some blocks or something to lift it off. I recommend just using some standard cinder blocks. I don't know if you can see those in the back there, but those work really well. Four of them make a great base for a big chief smoker and two of them make a great base for a little chief smoker. So I'll just set this down here. I wanna note that there's a piece of tinfoil on the bottom shelf, and that is, just makes for easy cleanup. Now I have the fish here, and I'm gonna put it in the second from the top slot. That's my favorite slot to use most of the time. So you can see where I loaded it on the tray. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in while we continue to talk. If you do it at a slight angle and put those first two feet in, then you can line up the other two feet and it'll drop straight down. Then, when you put the lid in, put the lid in at an angle like this, then you put it down, put pressure with your hand here and on the box with the other hand, and it'll just pop right in like that almost every time. You just give it a little push. It's flexible aluminum, so it's really easy to manipulate. Now, the reason that I have that in there on that shelf is because we're gonna run a long cook to get the smoke flavor and dry the fish out the way we want. And if we put it down at the bottom, it might overcook a little bit and not have as much smoky flavor. If we put it all the way at the top, that'll be the coolest section and it'll have the most smoky flavor, which could result in a bitter smoke flavor. If you are gonna do that and you put or fill the whole thing with fish, then you'll want to rotate your trays around in the middle of your cooking process, possibly two or three times even, just to make sure that you get real even cooking. What I normally do is I put the smallest fish near the top and then the biggest fish near the bottom to start with for the first half of the process. And then I flip it around because I wanna get those bigger fish more well done and then put them on the top to get a little bit more smoke into them. Again, you can also pull out a tray of the smaller fish if it's done ahead or even set it in the oven to finish if you wanna eliminate smoke while you're still trying to smoke other fish. But that's not normally a problem. With the fish, we normally are able to do the complete process in here where something like jerky requires a little bit of drying, either with a dehumidifier or with the oven set on your lowest setting. So we're gonna go ahead and let this run. I can smell the smoke now, so it's starting to kick in. And uh, we'll come back and uh, check on it in about an hour for me. That'll just be one second for you. So it's been about an hour and a half. I wanted to make sure that the pan was completely done smoking. 
So first thing we'll do is I'll go ahead and take that out and give you a look at that. And you can see right here that all those wood chips are completely burned up and keeping them away from the edge worked out really well. I'll set this to the side for a minute. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use the glove. Normally I would just grab it hot, but I wanna make sure that you know that this is 165 or more degrees and it will be warm. I'm not gonna pull it up to the camera, but I'm gonna lift it up so you can see. And you can see it's starting to change color a little bit and dry out. There is a little bit of liquid from the fish coming out of the center. And other than that, everything looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and put this lid back on there. And then after I turn the camera off, I'll go ahead and dump the ashes and fill it up again. We're gonna let this roll for about six more hours. I will change that out three more times. It looks like the alder is a pretty mild smoke coming out of there. Um, it smells really good. It doesn't smell very bitter. And that is what we're really going for here because trout is such a mild flavor. For me, that'll be six hours. For you, that'll just be one second. It's been about six and a half hours and we are ready to go here. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop a picture that I just took from inside the smoker so you can see how the fish look. I went ahead and I brought out a plate. What I'm gonna do, rather than take it all out, I'm gonna reach down in here and take one of the small ones out. I'm sure they're all gonna be done by now, but I'm gonna do this first. So that way we can get a good sample of it. Get a look here. I'm gonna go ahead and break it in half. Then you can see that in there. So this is what we have here. I'm gonna take one of the pieces right off the top in the back because there's not very many bones in there, but with the trout bones, when they're smoked, there's not a lot there to worry about. And there's a few of them running right across there. So be careful when I'm eating it, but they're gonna be pretty soft. That's a really mild taste. I probably could have went with a little bit more smoke. That was, I wanted to be careful not to over smoke it. Plus I wanted to be able to taste the flavoring from the packet mix. And uh, it is mild, but uh, it's good. So this is the uh, inside of one of the rib cages. It's actually pretty good to eat like that because usually you get a lot of smoke in there. So what I'll do is, is it all kind of strip it off. This is really good. If you are a person who likes it lightly smoked, that's exactly the way it turned out in this batch here. And I think my wife is actually gonna enjoy this. And uh, her number one complaint is almost always the same, that there's too much smoke in the food. But I think that she's gonna really like this. So I'm gonna try just a little bit more. These edge pieces have a little bit more smoky flavor.
It tastes pretty good. And some of these big pieces right here with uh, less bones in them. I'll let you see that a little bit. I turned the light on so that way we don't have any shadows. And uh, you can see the smoke on there. And you can taste it. But like I said, it is really mellow. For me, I would have went, I would go a little bit heavier on smoke for my liking. But I think for most people, they'll be quite happy with that. The flavoring itself is really good. It's not very strong. It's a very mild smoke flavoring and there is a little bit of salt taste in there, but not overbearing at all. And that's one of the problems with the homemade brine is sometimes you can put too much salt in and that's not a issue with this here. So that's pretty much it. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take this out. and get it unplugged. And I'm gonna put this in the fridge for tomorrow. So if you saw anything you like here, uh, the links will be below in the description, including a link for the trout salmon brine mix. Um, I, for myself, I'm gonna probably add a little bit of pepper to it next time and uh, get a little bit more kick in it for myself. And of course, I'm gonna use more smoke, but this thing is just a master at cooking smoked trout. I, that's one of the second things that I ever cooked in it. Smoked smelt was my first. And if you're considering cooking uh, smoked trout or steelhead or salmon, this is the ticket right here. It's almost automatic. So again, thank you for watching and have a great day.